Welcome to TMS WebCore Hands-On. Today we're going to take a deeper look into the Await keyword that has been introduced with the latest version of TMS WebCore, Ancona. The Await keyword can be used to work with multiple forms in an application and make it much easier than before it was available. My name is Holger Flick, and if you have questions or comments about this video, just email me. My email address is holger at flixengineering.com. The scenario used in this example is pretty simple, and I'm quite sure you'll be able to transfer it into your own applications. On the left, you see the main view of an application with a login button. The login button can be used by the user to log into their account. We will not focus on the authentication that is being used. We'll just focus on the fact that the main view shows a second form with the sign in title that allows the user to enter their email address or username and password. Of course, we will be able to distinguish if the user pressed OK or cancel. Before we look at the implementation, here's the running application. The main view, we can click on login. A second form is shown. I can enter my username, my password, click OK, and I'm logged in. Of course, if you press cancel, the login is canceled. Every form in a TMS WebCore application usually is tied to one unit. Here you see the main form tied to uformain.pass and the login form is tied to uformlogin.pass. The main form will use the login form and will have to create the instance. Let's have a look how we had to do it before the await keyword was available. Double clicking on the login, we get into the button login click event. And here you see I prepared a method called do login old, which will show us how we had to log in before TMS WebCore Ancona. We need a reference to the new form that is supposed to be created. Also, be very aware that if you use this construct, you do not need to create the form when the application is started. So whenever you create a secondary form, go into your application and make sure that only the main form or the form that you show first is being created. All the other forms do not need to be created at all. You can make sure that this doesn't happen by going to Tools, Options, User Interface, Form Designer, and here you find the module creation options and auto create forms and data modules should be disabled. That will make sure that the IDE doesn't add each form that you add to your project into the project file. That way it will not happen that you create a form dynamically in code that has already been created. Another good thing to do is when you switch to the login form that is supposed to be opened, get rid of the variable that usually is declared here by the IDE. You won't need it and it will only lead to confusion. So just to be clear, usually the IDE creates a variable right here, form login of type T form login, and that will allow you to use the variable form login or the object instance reference form login in each unit that uses U form login. Of course, that even works without the form being created. That's why Delphi creates all forms when the application starts by default to make sure that this works. It's good habit to get rid of this reference and write your own code instead. That prevents you from using forms when they haven't been initialized, meaning created yet. Also, creating and releasing forms from memory becomes much more structured when getting rid of that variable reference. The first step was to create a new form instance. For this, TMS provided the method create new. You should not have used create. Create new expects one anonymous method or method as its parameter, which will be called after the form has been created. And that was the key. Create new was a non-blocking operation, meaning it is being called. And this line right here, L form login pop up false because we don't want to pop up was executed right away before the new form was created. That's how the web works. So in order to pass values like default values to a form, 
We could think of the username and the password being passed to the form, for example, would not have been possible at this stage where we set the pop-up property to false. Instead, we had to use this anonymous method and use the a new form reference to access the newly created form instead. Because we don't know how long it takes for your web browser to create the new form. The same applies when the form is being shown using show modal, you have to pass the method that is supposed to be called when the form is closed. Because yet again, we don't know how long it takes the user to close the form. And this operation can't be blocking because if you were waiting like in a VCL application until the user closes the form, nothing else would be able to go on in your web browser because the web browser has several tabs. And also while your form is shown, the web browser can do other stuff that is not tied to your page in particular. So blocking operations are simply not happening when you program web applications. Here you see what we do when the form is closed. We are also passed the parameter of T modal result, which we can then use to say, did the user click OK? If the user clicked OK, we start the login process. And if the user clicked cancel, we simply do nothing, which will lead to the form just being closed. Be very aware not to call something like lformlogin.free at the end of this method that creates or shows the form. That will basically create the form and tell it to be released from memory right away. You would never show anything. So that is not possible. You have to do it like this using the anonymous method for the code that is supposed to be executed when the form is closed. TMS Web Core makes sure that the form is released when you use this construct. We can all agree that this is not easy to read and maintain. For example, when you create the form, this line right here, which is coming after the lines that are being part of this anonymous method, is executed before these. So something that is in your code before is being executed after something and then you have multiple levels of code for example here the show modal is passing an anonymous method that is also being executed as soon as the form is closed still it becomes harder to maintain your code if you have a lot of code written in this way because you always have to be aware if your application is running there might always be the case that some anonymous method is being executed that the user interaction hasn't happened with yet, and then at some point it is going to happen. This mostly means that, for example, states that you want to maintain or monitor have to be embedded in field variables of your classes because you don't know when this is being executed, so you can't use a local variable to save certain states. This led to TMS making it a lot easier introducing the await keyword, which is part of the path to JS compiler. Just to point this out, I just said it like colloquially, it is part of the path to JS compiler. That means you won't be able to use await in your VCL or FireMonkey applications because it is strictly a part of TMS Web Core and its compiler that creates your web applications. Let's look at the new possibilities that we have with await. Again, we go to the implementation of the login button and change do login old to do login. Again, we have the reference to the form. In this case, we also need a local variable to store the result of the dialog being closed, meaning if the OK button has been pressed or the cancel button has been pressed. T modal result is an integer, so that's why I use that data type here. Instead of using and this is already the first major difference, we can use the standard create method with the parameter self, meaning we create the form and its owner is being set to the form that creates it. And in the next line already, we have T form login pop-up equals false, same as before, but there's no code that would be executed when the form has been created or anything like that. No anonymous method is being used. So what we do now is we use the await keyword and the method tform login load. 
that makes sure that the execution of this method does not continue before lform login has been completely loaded and created. The necessity for the method node is pretty simple because TMS Web Core had to use a method name that was not used yet. So TMS Web Core uses load in order to tell it load the form, await waits for it, and then the first parameter gives the data type that is supposed to be used that is being loaded. In this case, it is team form login, which is the class type of L form login. If you want to initialize your form with values, at this point you could actually do L form login dot, and you would be able to set default values if you wanted to. There is no restriction here that you have to use an anonymous method. No precautions have to be taken. You can simply write your code one line to the next without taking care of the fact that this is being executed asynchronously inside of the web browser. So you do not know how much time will pass between this await call and the end result, but you can be sure that it's going to be executed non-blocking, meaning your application will stay active and responsive. And at the point that the form has been created, the next line is being executed. And the next line is also an await call that will show the form for which we use the execute method. Execute shows the form and returns a t-modal result that allows us to evaluate which button was pressed. The next line is being executed as soon as the form is closed. No sooner, no later. And then you can simply evaluate the result of L result. And you can also, this is something you see here, use the instance variable with a form to read values from the form that has been created. So in this case, I read the login and the password. Again, no anonymous method and the code runs from top to bottom like you're used to it since that file one. The try and finally block is also very important because if something goes wrong inside the await calls, exceptions are being thrown. So also, exception handling is part of await. If an exception is being thrown, the error message will be shown on screen and you can handle the exceptions. Or, like here, I simply say, finally, make sure that the new form that was created is released from memory. That's it. So, completely different implementation because it doesn't rely on any anonymous methods anymore. It runs from the first line to the last line line by line without anything being executed out of order. And if we run this, we will be able to prove that it works exactly the same way as before. So click and log in. Here's my email address, password. I click cancel, nothing happens. I click OK. And once again, I get to the main menu with my data being shown and available after logging in. Await is proof that TMS is never happy with the solution they have if there is an option for improvement. This example has shown that it is easy to migrate your existing code to use the new await keyword. Also, it shows that it is much easier to write code now making use of await. You have to be less aware of asynchronicity inside of your application. Everything is structured again in your Delphi code. The framework will do the hard work for you. The framework will make sure that your application waits without blocking other processes and threads, and you can concentrate on building your application logic line by line without having to build anonymous methods or other method calls, also called callbacks, that are being called sometime in the future and are difficult to maintain and hard to understand, especially if you have a huge number of forms that you work with, or which we will see in a different video, if you have a huge number of web service requests that also did require the implementation of anonymous methods to evaluate the results. Stay tuned for more exciting features in TMS, WebCore, Ancona, and upcoming releases.